the history of NFL stadiums. You cannot compare the modern day NFL stadium to the ones from the early days of the NFL without talking about the oldest NFL stadium in history. Soldier Field, home to the Chicago Bears, was built way back in 1924 and is still standing and being used today. Soldier Field, like every other football stadium in the beginning, wasn't necessarily built for an NFL team. Back when the NFL was getting its start, the NFL teams didn't really have their own personal stadium the way they do today. NFL teams would end up sharing an already existing stadium with other professional sports teams from different leagues, usually a Major League Baseball team. Soldier Field is the perfect example. Construction for the stadium started way back in 1922 and it wouldn't be completed until 1924. The stadium was built as a multi-purpose stadium with a design that favoured many different sports. The stadium was shaped in the form of a U and in the original design was set to have a seating capacity of 74,000 people. In the end, Soldier Field was only able to hold 66,000 with a potential of 100,000 with additional seating that could be added later on. It was an outdoor stadium with a field of natural grass. Most early NFL stadiums followed the same design as Soldier Field, with the biggest difference being seat capacity. To this day, Soldier Field is the smallest NFL stadium because after renovations, the seating capacity actually went down to 61,000. Whilst it wasn't an ideal situation for NFL teams to always have to share stadiums, and playing conditions that sometimes didn't suit them, some teams were lucky to have an actual stadium to play in, compared to the situation of the Green Bay Packers. The Packers spent their first two seasons in the NFL playing at a literal sandlot, using it as a makeshift stadium, but there was no building structure to it. Even when the Packers were able to move on from the sandlot, the NFL team was still forced to play at a minor league baseball stadium that was only big enough to hold four to 5,000 people. So when looking at the NFL stadium situation back in the early days, and compared to the stadiums of today, there have been some major changes. The evolution from multi-purpose stadiums to NFL stadiums started in the 1970s. The first two stadiums to change the game for NFL teams and fans was the Texas Stadium and Arrowhead Stadium. Kansas City Chiefs and Dallas Cowboys were the ones responsible for showing other NFL teams what kind of stadiums football players needed, deserved and could have, if they were willing to do what it took to come up with the money to build a stadium. In the beginning, after the Chiefs made the move from Texas to Kansas, they were stuck in the same situation as other NFL teams, sharing a stadium with an MLB team, but the team ran into a major problem with some new requirements set by the NFL after the merger. In order for a stadium to host a football team, it had to have a seating capacity of 50,000, and the Municipal Stadium only had 35,000 seats, making it ineligible to host the Chiefs. Unable to find a new location in time, the Chiefs were saved by Jackson County, who stepped in offering up a location, and voters would approve of a $102 million bond issue to build a new stadium. When it came down to design, it was going to be two stadiums built side by side, a football and a baseball stadium. In the original design, Arrowhead Stadium was supposed to have a rolling roof, but in the end, it proved to be too difficult, so they ended up going with the current open air stadium. But later on down the road, the original design would go on to influence future NFL stadiums. Arrowhead Stadium had a seating capacity of 75,000 and was the first NFL stadium to include arrows on the yard markers to show the closest goal line. It is believed Arrowhead Stadium actually had a huge impact on the design for many future NFL stadiums. One more fun fact about Arrowhead Stadium was that it included an owner's suite with three bedrooms, bathrooms, a kitchen and a living room making it one of the first NFL stadiums to start adding extra amenities. 
This video is sponsored by Volcanic Charm Bracelet. Whether you're looking to make a bold statement or simply add a touch of nature to your outfit, this Volcanic Bracelet is the perfect choice for you. Visit VolcanicCharm.com and add this one-of-a-kind piece to your collection today. Texas Stadium was the home to the Dallas Cowboys, who went through a different situation to get their own football stadium. The Cowboys had been playing at the Cotton Bowl, aka Fair Park Stadium, since 1960. But over time, the founding owner started to feel like the Fair Park area was unsafe and no longer wanted season ticket holders to have to go through it for the games. His concerns birthed a vision of a new stadium with skyboxes with fans having to pay for a personal seat license in order to access the luxury club seating. Texas Stadium was one of the first NFL stadiums to have luxury box seating, which was a new source of income the league didn't have access to. The most interesting thing about the design for the Texas Stadium was the roof. In the original design, the roof for Texas Stadium was supposed to be retractable, which would have made it the first. Unfortunately, the structure of the stadium couldn't support the additional weight. Unlike the Chiefs general manager who just settled for an open air stadium, Murchison went for something a little different, giving Texas Stadium a partial roof. The first NFL stadium to have covered the stands, but left the playing field visible. A Cowboys linebacker, D.D. Lewis, made a statement about the partial roof saying, Texas Stadium has a hole in its roof so God can watch his favourite team play. Both Arrowhead Stadium and Texas Stadium were part of the new wave of football-only stadiums, but the two of them weren't the first. Texas Stadium opened in October of 1971 and Arrowhead Stadium opened in August of 1972. The stadium that came before both of them was Schaefer Stadium, aka Foxborough Stadium, but it was such an inadequate football stadium that it didn't meet any expectations. It doesn't hold a candle to Arrowhead Stadium or Texas Stadium who did it best. While Texas and Arrowhead Stadiums did a lot to change the game for NFL stadiums, it's really not fair to give the stadiums all the credit for the unique designs and the attempt of the retractable roof. Because neither stadium actually did it first, and it's safe to say the stadium that did do it first doesn't get the same credit or recognition because it falls on the list with all early NFL stadiums and was a multi-purpose stadium built for MLB team Houston Astros and became the home for NFL team the Houston Oilers in 1968. The name of the stadium is one that many know and few will ever forget even though it was demolished back in 2013. It is still one of the greatest stadiums to ever exist and influenced many other stadiums still to this day. And you can't talk about the evolution of NFL stadiums without talking about the Astrodome, the world's first ever domed stadium. The Astrodome was built back in 1965 with Houston's mayor Ray Hoffines financing and assisting in the design for the multi-purpose stadium. Roy was actually known to pioneer many modern stadiums. While the Astrodome was built in order to attract an MLB team to Houston, its design still favoured both baseball and football. The Astrodome was circular and had movable lower seats. It was also the first stadium to use artificial turf, which many NFL teams would start installing onto their fields. It was the first stadium to have an animated scoreboard and the stadium had a fitting nickname, the eighth wonder of the world. Astrodome may not have been a traditional NFL stadium built specifically for an NFL team, but many future NFL teams would go on to build their own dome stadiums and were influenced by the original. The Astrodome was responsible for the wave of NFL dome stadiums, but there is one thing the stadium can't take credit for, a feature that many stadiums before tried to install but always seemed to fall short, a feature that would become a staple for NFL stadiums today and that feature is none other than the retractable roof. This credit goes to the NRG Stadium opened in 2002 as the first NFL stadium to have a retractable roof. The idea was to have an open air stadium that could still offer the comfort of an indoor arena when it needed to. NRG Stadium was also built as a replacement for the Astrodome, 
but the biggest difference is this time it was an NFL stadium for the Houston Texans. One of the biggest changes in designs for NFL stadiums wasn't just features like the roof, the substance of the field or seating capacity. Another huge change made to stadiums over the years changed the game not for the teams but for the overall fan experience. While Texas Stadium introduced skyboxes, a luxury private suite area where fans get some of the best views and catered food, it was the Miami Hard Rock Stadium that took it to another level, or some would say a lower level with the premium club seating feature. Skyboxes are highly popular and there are many fans willing to pay top dollar to access the private space, but it's always best to have a more affordable option. Miami Hard Rock Stadium was the first stadium to utilize the middle tier below the skyboxes, giving fans more space and better views, but not without breaking the bank. The Miami Dolphins were able to erase their debt from having the stadium within 10 years from the revenue bought from the luxury seating. But the amenities of NFL stadiums would eventually go beyond luxury seating. Whereas in the early days, NFL teams were only concerned with having a stadium that had the right seat capacity, a tough exterior to deal with any harsh weather conditions, and a good playing field. In the future, when it came down to designing newer stadiums, owners were often searching for more entertaining attractions to add. In 2003, Lambeau Field underwent major renovations like stadiums often have to in order to preserve their longevity. An 80 exhibit hall of fame was added to the stadium along with the luxury seating. AT&T Stadium, the current home for the Dallas Cowboys, also has a built-in museum featuring world-class art handpicked by the owner Jerry Jones. Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home to the Atlanta Falcons, offers sideline suites for fans who want to up close and personal with the game. But by far the stadium with the best amenities would have to be the TIAA Bank Field, home to the Jackson Jaguars. The stadium has a number of impressive attractions, including a party zone with two wading pools and even an area called Pet Paradise for the fans' pets to cool off with the bone-shaped pool for furry animals. TIAA Bank Field is still at the top of the list, but that is set to change in the next few years as other NFL owners shell out millions of dollars to renovate stadiums just to add in more amenities and billions of dollars for new stadiums with attractions that no other stadium currently has. Back in 2021, the Patriots organization announced major renovations to Gillette Stadium, which would include adding in a fan entrance to the north end of the stadium, a new lighthouse providing fans with 360 degree views of the stadium, Patriot Place, the town of Foxborough and more, a new plaza and upgrades to the suites and surrounding hotels. The Washington Commanders and the Chicago Bears are both set to be getting new stadiums built in new areas, and the NFL owners aren't holding back with designs. Commander's owner Dan Snyder already revealed in one vision his design included a wall climbing area and a moat for water skiing. It is believed that is a dead design, but those attractions could still be on the table. The Chicago Bears are going to be making the move to Arlington Heights in the near future with a whole new stadium, which is going to be an enclosed dome and is supposed to legalize betting. So who knows, could the Bears owner be eyeing a casino in the future Chicago Bears stadium? You can't talk about new amenities the newer stadiums come with without talking about the technological upgrades made to NFL stadiums. Sometimes the renovations done to old stadiums isn't just about seating or new amenities. It's about upgrading the way fans experience the game. The Astrodome was the first stadium with an animated scoreboard. Today, NFL stadiums have evolved past animated scoreboards and moved on to jumbo screens, or as most people call them, jumbotrons. The jumbo TV screens sit high in the stadium, giving fans great views of replays. Like your favorite TV, the screens are constantly being upgraded by NFL teams to be bigger with better graphics. Some of the most notable jumbotrons in the NFL are the ones in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A 3,200 foot halo video board making it stand out from the rest. The infinity screen at SoFi Stadium is the largest jumbotron out of them all, sitting 37 feet above the field, letting every single fan see what is going on. 
technology didn't just allow for better screens, but also better ways for fans to get food. Levi Stadium, home to the San Francisco 49ers, has a tech-savvy feature that allows fans to order food from the concession stand from their phone and have it delivered to them, so they don't have to leave the comfort of their seats and wait in long lines. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a section in Raymond James Stadium called Buccaneers Cove, with a massive pirate ship that shoots a cannon every single time the team scores. So even if the fans miss it for whatever reason, the cannon will definitely alert them that the team has scored. There's no doubt NFL stadiums today have undergone massive changes when compared to the past, but the biggest difference between then and now is probably the cost. Soldier Field cost $13 million to build, but even then the stadium wasn't the cheapest. Lambeau Field, opening up in September of 1957, only cost $960,000 to be built. In just another decade, new NFL stadiums would cost three to four times that. Arrowhead Stadium cost $43 million, and Texas Stadium would cost $35 million. When it came time to renovate some of these stadiums, the renovations would carry a price tag of $200 to $500 million. Soldier Field underwent massive renovations in 2001 that came up to $690 million. Today, the cost to build a new NFL stadium is usually going to cost anywhere between $700 million up to $1 billion, which would explain why it's so hard to convince cities to approve of a new NFL stadium, because in most cases, the home city of that stadium is expected to chip in. Last, but definitely not least, the best thing about the evolution of NFL stadiums is how they impact the game. Some NFL stadiums out there today, and even some in the past that no longer exist, really did change the game for all the teams who called them home. You can't talk about NFL stadiums without talking about home field advantage. Some NFL players would say there is no such thing and the stadium doesn't matter. But that has proven to be wrong many times, and some NFL stadiums are known to give visiting teams a rough time. A lot of NFL teams go undefeated on their home turf through multiple seasons. Some teams enjoyed their best years at an old stadium with impressive records and weren't able to find the same success with the new stadium. Some of the most notable football stadiums with home field advantage are Lambeau Field, home to the Green Bay Packers. Lambeau Field is one of the stadiums that NFL teams try to avoid having the playoffs go through. Considering the harsh weather conditions of the state of Wisconsin in January, the cold temperatures can be bothersome to teams who aren't used to it, not to mention the dedicated fan base. Mile High Stadium, home to the Denver Broncos, is a problem because of the high altitude and thin air. The atmosphere creates a problem for people not used to it, leaving the visiting team's players a little winded. Steelers' Ryan Clark couldn't even play at the stadium because the atmosphere was a risk to his health. Heinz Field, home to the Pittsburgh Steelers, creates different situations for opposing teams with strong winds and the dicey grass. But the stadium with the best home field advantage in the NFL would have to be Lumen Field, home to the Seattle Seahawks. Lumen Field is the loudest NFL stadium and visiting teams often struggle to play there because of the high volume. When the fans really turn up the noise, opposing offences are sometimes unable to hear the play for the game, creating confusion. The history of NFL stadiums doesn't end here, because in the future, NFL teams will only get more creative with the design, amenities, technological advances and more. In another decade or so, NFL stadiums today will be like the ones of the past. NFL owners are all looking for various ways to add new fan experiences bring in more revenue, and give their teams a leg up in home games. The evolution of NFL stadiums has only just begun.